Aaron, a, a question not about the game. Uh, what were or are the factors that prompted you to want to trade? Magic. Oh man, things are getting good, aren't they guys? Things are really starting to get good. So the theme of today's trade deadline so far has been the fire sale that the Orlando Magic have been having. It's almost as if they looked at their entire roster and said, look, if we keep these players, we might make it as an eighth seed, maybe a seventh seed, or at least make it into the play-in tournament for this year's NBA playoffs. We're tired of that. We need to either move on from these pieces and get some value in return, or we got to do something here. And it appears as though the Orlando Magic have been extremely proactive in this year's trade deadline so far. Now, in my last report, I must admit, it was my first video of the day. It was before the caffeine hit me. I'm on three and a half hours of sleep. So I apologize if that analysis wasn't up to your standards. And before we get to the content, just letting you guys know, I have partnered with Get Like Coop and Mike Corzemba to start a brand new podcast on a separate channel called Laced Up. We're gonna drop our first episode on Monday. And if you subscribe and turn on our notifications for that channel, you have entered for a chance to win a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series. X. Now, on top of that, if you go onto my Instagram, I'm doing a separate giveaway for this and follow me and turn my notifications on for my Instagram. You've also officially entered for a chance to win a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? So we're going to try to cover as much as we can while trying to be as in-depth as we possibly can. And anything that we possibly miss out in this video, I'm going to have to do in my next video. So subscribe and turn on our notifications because here we go. So originally I said, and I'm always going to own up to takes that are horrible. I said a few weeks ago, it's a foregone conclusion that Kyle Lowry was going to end up as a member of the Philadelphia 76ers. And I was freaking wrong because apparently the demand for Kyle Lowry went up over time and then on top of that there were reports that he may want to stay in Toronto there are some weird reports that the Lakers may want to go after him no matter what we all agree that Kyle Lowry was probably the most valuable point guard on the market but to be honest and I've said this in other videos before there were much cheaper and more efficient options that you could have gotten without potentially selling the farm. And I'll give you a nice little example of this. So earlier today, we had a report that the Philadelphia 76ers were indeed engaged in a trade with the Toronto Raptors for Kyle Lowry. As a matter of fact, as the day went on, we even got reports that said Kyle Lowry was expected and preparing to move back to Philadelphia. But get this, the Toronto Raptors wanted Tyrese Maxey, Matisse Thibel, and two first round picks from the Philadelphia 76ers for Kyle Lowry. Now, I understand Kyle Lowry's a good player, but Kyle Lowry's also 35 years old. Kyle Lowry's only on your roster for one more year, and Kyle Lowry is getting paid 30 million dollars this year so you're gonna have to somehow match that salary as well and Daryl Morey doesn't really like giving up a ton of assets just for one player unless if it's an absolute bona fide superstar and that's not a knock against Lowry but there were so many better options available why would you go after Kyle Lowry when you could do this instead Philadelphia went ahead and traded with the OKC Thunder. And I said this in my last video that this player could have been had if you just gave up a young player, maybe some second round picks. And this is what they did. They gave up Tony Bradley, Terrence Ferguson, and two future second round picks for George Hill. Now, I love this trade. I think George Hill is a remarkable player that isn't going to be ball dominant, that could spot up next to Ben Simmons, and now you have a situation that every single player around Ben Simmons could shoot the three. You have a very good point guard that has proficient playoff experience and championship experience with multiple good teams. So I think this is a significantly better deal than any deal for Kyle Lowry. You get to keep Tyrese Maxey, you get to keep Matisse Thibel, and you get a point guard that fills a position of need. I think this is a home run. And if you're a Philadelphia 76ers fan, I understand it's not Kyle Lowry, but at least you get to keep your other role players. And for that, I'm going to give this a huge A for the Philadelphia 76ers for not 
chasing a trade that they shouldn't have chased. Also, a part of this deal is Austin Rivers is going to go to OKC as part of a three-way deal. Now, on top of that, the Toronto Raptors went ahead and decided to make a crazy deal of their own, trading Norman Powell to the Portland Trailblazers for Gary Trent and Rodney Hood. Norman Powell is probably the best shooting guard that could have been had during this trade deadline. He's been averaging almost 20 points per game, shooting 50% from the field and an amazing 44% from three with a player efficiency rating of 17.6. The Raptors are currently in a situation where it looks like they're trying to head towards a rebuild. Damian Lillard finally is able to get some additional depth and some help. And honestly, I think that the Portland Trailblazers are winners for this trade. Now, Gary Trent Jr. isn't a player to sneeze at either. He's been having a remarkable season for himself as well. He's been a fairly proficient three-point scorer, shooting 40% from three this year after attempting seven threes per game. So you do take a minor downgrade, but you do get additional role players. So I guess this works out for the Toronto Raptors as well. Now, an additional trade we just got word of is the fact that the Sacramento Kings are finalizing a deal to send Nemanja Bialica to the Miami Heat. Miami is going to send Mo Harkless and Chris Silva to the Sacramento Kings which is a fairly minor trade in my opinion. And this leads us to our granddaddy trade of the video, which is the Denver Nuggets trading for Aaron Gordon. If you're watching our videos earlier, we knew that Aaron Gordon was absolutely miserable on the Orlando Magic. It seemed like the guy just practically gave up on basketball. As a matter of fact, look at this interview. Aaron, a, a question not about the game. Uh, what were or are the factors that prompted you to want to trade from the Magic? Uh, I mean, uh... You know, uh, there's been times where I just express my frustration uh, to management, you know, frustration with um, the losses, um, the injuries, uh, the way we've been playing, uh, how we've been playing, and, and how many losses have accumulated over the years. So, um, you know, it's, it's just my frustration kind of um, boiling over, I would say. And now, um, oh, excuse me. And uh, I think a lot of people felt it, share that sentiment with me, you know, of frustration. So as a result, and ironically, that interview was given when he was facing the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets are making a move that definitely will bolster their front court. And guess what? They didn't even have to give up Bull Bull in this deal. So we know the Nuggets have a ton of guards. You know, RJ Hampton, Gary Harris, Will Barton, Monte Morris, PJ Dujer, and of course, Jamal Murray. So what they decided to do was trade Gary Harris and RJ Hampton and a first round pick to the Orlando Magic for Aaron Gordon. Now, this is absolutely exciting. If not only if you're a Denver Nuggets fan, but if you're a basketball fan, because now we get to see Jokic with a prime young athletic front court partner, nothing against Paul Millsap, but he was trending downwards. He was getting a little old over there. Clearly not the player he once was. And I'm really excited to see what kind of offense they're gonna build in Denver. The Orlando Magic pretty much get their replacement for Evan Fournier, although it's not a direct replacement, but they, they get young, promising, high upside players that they could be excited about. And they're able to move on from Aaron Gordon, who was clearly disgruntled, while also clearing up the log jam in the front court. Let's see what Mo Bamba has for us. I've been waiting to see if this player has any potential whatsoever for the longest time. And for the longest time, he hasn't really had an opportunity to play. He's played 10 minutes per game this year. And throughout his entire career, he's played 15 minutes per game. And he clearly has demonstrated the ability to at least somewhat develop as a three-point scorer. So if you're an Orlando Magic fan, you should be happy that you're actually getting assets. You're finally hoarding assets. And if you're the Denver Nuggets, you made a remarkable move to strengthen up your team without giving up too much right before a very intimidating Western Conference playoff push, which... I actually think the Denver Nuggets could win. Bear in mind, this team made it to the Western Conference Finals last year. The Los Angeles Clippers seem to have regressed. The Los Angeles Lakers are dealing with injuries, so the jury's out on them. Of course, the Phoenix Suns and the Utah Jazz have entered the picture, but I really like teams like the Denver Nuggets and the Utah Jazz, the way they're being built around multiple good players in a good system in place, not around one or two or three superstars, but around multiple really good players that play smart basketball 
And I can't wait to see this team take the court. I'm a Laker fan, but I'm actively rooting for teams like the Nuggets and the Jazz. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all these trades. Hopefully the next video I come at you guys about will be about Lonzo Ball and Kyle Lowry. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.